There are many Christian young men that believe in sex before marriage. There are. I know there are. Yeah, brother in Christ, yeah, but I, I want to wait until, oh, let's just do it. Yeah. There are. But the one that says to you, no, let's wait. Because God says we have to wait. Let's pray about it first. I want to honor you before God and man. That's an apple tree. Verse 4. Uh, no, sorry. I sat down. No, verse 3. I sat down under his shadow with great delight. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. Young man, God has called you to be more than just someone who plays Xbox and PlayStation. God has called you, young man, to be a soldier. You have been called to be a protector. You've been called to give protection and security to the woman that you will marry. But more than that, God has called young men into this world to further a kingdom, the kingdom of God. You are in a war against the devil. And God has called you to further his kingdom. And as well as furthering his kingdom, if you then decide to take one of God's children creation, one of God's daughters under your responsibility. You have to make sure that you provide them the protection that they need. You must not be too quick to go to bed with a woman if you don't know the consequences of that act. You've been called into this world to be more than just an MC. Young black man, you've been called into this world to be much more than just a footballer. There's a war. And you've been called to fight in that war. So she says that he gives her a shadow. That image of the shadow means protection. A young man has no right taking on a woman under his responsibility, unless he has shown that he can take responsibility of his own life. You have no right. You have no right to touch her. You have no right to say anything to her that would imply that you somehow can give her that protection if you know that you cannot. You have absolutely no right. And if you do, God will hold you accountable on the day of judgment. That you take on one of his creations only to mess her up. You've been called to protect her. You've been called to provide. And finally, verse 4, which is probably the most important verse in this bit. He brought me to the banqueting house. And his banner over me was love. Young people today, we know nothing of love. We think we know what love is. We don't know what love is. Listen to what she says. She doesn't say he took me raving or he took me clubbing. She doesn't say that. She says he took me to the banqueting house. A banqueting house. A man who takes his woman to a banqueting house is a man who honors and respects her woman. You don't take a fling to a banqueting house. Why? A banqueting house is a place where people of esteem and status and people respect them. 
If you're taking your woman to a banqueting house, she will dress like a lady. Not skimpy top, not skirt up to here, showing all of her skin. When you take her to the banqueting house, she will listen to music where you have to look at her to dance. You're not going to be dancing behind her, trying to get excited. No, no, you're going to look her face to face. You're going to look her in the eyes. No, you've taken her to a place where when you enter in, people are going to say, well, she must be quite important that he decided to bring her in this place. He took me to the banqueting house. Now listen to this next bit. And his banner over me was love. And I was thinking, what does that mean? His banner over me was love. Let me tell you what it said to me. There's this young man with this young woman and they've entered into this banqueting house where all these couples are there. And throughout the whole night that they're in there, the way that he treats her in private when they're together is the way that he treats her in that public place, in that banqueting house. The same attention that he accords her when they're in private is the same attention that he is giving to her in his public place. The way that he acts around her, the respect and the honor that he has conferred or given unto his woman in public is the same that he conferred and given unto this woman in private. So much so that the people around look at these two together and they can only come to one conclusion. These two truly are in love. These two truly are in love. It is almost as if the way that he acts around her, there is an invisible banner over the two of them. And it's a declaration of how much he loves her. Do you want a woman, do you want a man who takes you to a place and he spends most of his time looking at other women around you? Solomon doesn't do that. So the banner is a declaration. It's a declaration that says also this. Yes, there are many other women out there. But I have chosen this lily. And I will not take my attention away from her. Now, that is the ideal picture. And the other thing is that notice that the word love doesn't come into the picture until right at the end of this wonderful description of those two together. And this is what God is saying to you, young people, today. Before the sex, before the foreplay, before any of this other sexual intimacy stuff, the foundation of a true relationship, the foundation of true sexual intimacy, the foundation of a true true life between a man and a woman. The foundation of real lovemaking is love. Is love. If the foundation of your relationship is sex, what about the day that he doesn't give you any sex? If the foundation of your relationship is sex, what about the day that she says, I'm tired? What are you going to do then? Dump him? No, the foundation has to be love. Love. Now what is love? If you read the book of 1 Corinthians 13, Paul gives